Welcome to the Simplify Science Lecture for Unit 10.1, Make Like a Tree. We have a quote here from Ralph Waldo Emerson. The vegetable life does not content itself with casting from the flower or the tree a single seed, but it fills the air and with a prodigality of seeds, that if thousands perish, thousands may plant themselves, that hundreds may come up, that tens may live to maturity, that at least one may replace the parent. The images here are from a giant sequoia. It's widely considered to be one of, if not the largest organism. Um, there's lots of different ways to look at what the largest organism is, but this one's very impressive. General Sherman is its name. It's uh, hard to see in the example that person standing there on the right and looking at the left. Pretty impressive. Our learning goals are to describe the organ systems in plants and compare homeostasis in plants to those in animals. We already know that plants are multicellular, have eukaryotic cells, and that multicellular life have levels of specializations. We learned in the lab that plants that develop the systems for moving nutrients and molecules throughout the plant, that nutrients, water, things flow up, that organic molecules flow down. Green algae, one of the one of the species of green algae is a common ancestor of modern plants. Photosynthetic, eukaryotes, sexual reproduction, multicellular body, stores energy and starch, contains cellulose and cell walls, cell division makes channels and cell walls. All of these things are properties that came from the species of green algae. This species, a member of the Carafetians, lived in fresh water, had wet and dry spells. As these dry spells kept coming up, depending on the length of the dry spells, some things would dry out and die, and others would last. It was an evolutionary advantage to be able to survive longer dry periods, and as they evolved to survive longer and longer and longer, the advantage became so strong that these organisms could live on dry land indefinitely. So we can see in this cladogram, that 500 million years ago, we had these early Carafetians, and somewhere 460 million years ago, we had a common ancestry split where one group became the Carafetians, a group of green algae, and another group became um, the early uh, plants. Then we find our next common ancestor at about 400 million years, and we get a split where one of the groups maintains um, becomes the bryophytes, which we call mosses today. Another group becomes the early vascular plants. Until about 350 million years ago, we get another common ancestry split, where some of them are a group of seedless vascular plants, which we call ferns. Another group becomes the first seed plants, which is a very successful line. Until about 150 million years ago, we see a split. They had a common ancestor, between the gymnosperms, this is our conifers, and our angiosperms, which are our flowering plants. One of the plant adaptations needed to live on land is to protect water. It's one of the things we need to maintain for homeostasis. One of the adaptations is a cuticle layer. It's this waterproof waxiness that's on the top. Some plants have more or less, depending on their environment and the need for an availability to water. Uh, things like cactus or aloe vera, which are desert plants, have very, very waxy outsides because you know, they really need to protect their water supply. Now, sometimes air and water still do need to move in and out. So there are structures on the bottom called stomata. It's an opening in the cuticle. There are guard cells that can open and close it in response to different stimuli. Our plants need a vascular system because being really tall for some of our plants is an advantage because we can reach above other shorter plants, get closer to the sun, have higher ability of sunlight. But the water we're pulling is from the dirt and now we're far away from that. So we have to be able to transport things. So some resources start at the bottom and need to move up. Some resources start at the top and need to move down. So we have xylem and we have phloem. 
now that we have these vascular systems, plants can grow higher and be even more specialized. Another part that we need to have, plants don't have bones. So instead of having individual specialized bone cells like animals have, each cell has a little bit of specialization. There's lignin. Lignin is a molecule that hardens the cell wall, gives extra structural support. Reproducing in the water was much simpler because water does a good job of already moving things around for you. So reproducing on land had some limitations to itself. Pollen is that adaptation that helps move sperm throughout the air. What a seed is, is a way that we protect and store a fertilized plant embryo until it's time for it to develop. Here's a developing question for you to think about. Which developed earlier, the moss or the fern? According to my cladogram, it is the moss that developed earlier. Even if we look at it, we see simpler, more efficient structures, whereas my fern has vascular systems that are more complex. A proficient question. Why bother adapting the dry land at all? Water's a pretty good place. Well, with a great competition for nutrients in the water, there was a new niche available that uh, plants could go and colonize where at first there was very little competition. So it's an available you know, food source and um, secure habitat. A master question. Why are the four adaptations discussed for land-based plants unnecessary for the green algae? How do they overcome each of the four challenges? Well, if we look at those four challenges, staying hydrated, vascular system, being strong and tall, reproducing on land, all of those problems are pretty much taken up by the aquatic environment. Water handles all those. It's easy to stay hydrated when you're in water. It's easy to move things around because you don't have to be that big because you're in the water. You don't have to be that strong because you can float in the water. And it's easy to reproduce because the water will move things around for you. Water is very convenient in those ways. Now let's look at some types of plant cells. So here are some funny words for the three kinds of plant cells. Now whenever you see funny words like this, generally you don't pronounce the first, uh, first syllable really strongly. So students will like to look at this word and say parenchyma but that sounds a lot less elegant than the real pronunciation of parenchyma, kalinchyma, sclerenchyma. These are our three types. So parenchyma are spherical, thin-walled, living metabolizing tissue. If you look at the picture there, it's very common. These are um, probably our most common. They're found all throughout the plant. They're in photosynthesis, respiration, all kinds of normal things. The kalinchyma are alive at maturity, they're elongated, they're beneath the epidermis, they're a support system, flexible. My sclerenchyma cells have primary and secondary cell walls. They're actually dead at their functional maturity because these form very strong fibers like in wood, bark, leaves, and stems. It's a structural support, specialized cells that do that. Now, a system the dermal tissue, remember tissues are collected, collections of cells. We have live parenchyma tissues, or sorry, live parenchyma cells in the non-woody parts and dead parenchyma cells in woody bark parts. Depending, some epidermis cells secrete the wax substance that becomes the cuticle. The ground tissue system is inside surrounded by the dermal tissue system. This stores materials and supports the roots and stem. In leaves, this tissue is black with chloroplast. It's made up of parenchyma, colenchyma, and sclerenchyma. Inside the ground tissue, we find the vascular tissue system. It transports water, minerals, and organic compounds. Our two are xylem and phloem. Xylem 
carries water and nutrients from the soil up from the roots. Phloem carries any products of photosynthesis, like sugars or organic molecules, down and out from the leaves, flowing in opposite directions. This is the movement of resources. Xylem going one way, phloem going the other, distributing everything where it needs to go. A lot of information here in this diagram. So we can see that the phloem transports sugars and other items. The xylem transports water and minerals. We can see uh, all these different things happening in this structure. From the left side would be the bottom of the leaf and the right side is the top of the leaf. We kind of have a cross section here. And we're seeing some of each cell type. The sclerenchyma cells are mainly dead cells that have primary and secondary cell, cell walls to provide support. We see that zoomed in. The colenchyma cells function and support, but they're living. And my parenchyma cells are unspecialized, but they're doing most of the metabolism. It's where we're seeing the chloroplasts and those things happen. Do a developing question. What are the three types of basic plant cells? Well, it says three fun words. Parenchyma, colenchyma, sclerenchyma. Let's do a Venn diagram. Compare and contrast dermal tissues with human skin. Whereas the dermal tissue is a single layer, prevents water loss, the human skin has multiple layers and allows water out, like sweat. Now they both protect the underlying structures. They both um, don't have chloroplasts. They serve very similar functions. Let's look at a mastery question. Make an analogy between the sclerenchyma cells and structures in the human body. Well, the sclerenchyma cells provide the very strong support. They have that extra ligand in there. They're similar to what, in humans, what we have specialized bone cells for. They give us an anchor that lets us be tall and strong. 